Hey everyone, Wes here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to talk about the update for Hogwarts Legacy that is set to release this summer. We're going to talk about what that update could include, how big is it going to be, and when is it going to officially release. So as you know, Hogwarts Legacy was one of my favorite games from 2023. And now that 2024 has started giving us some major releases, it's naturally gotten me thinking more about the future of Harry Potter in the gaming world, especially since Warner Brothers is reportedly planning on having a more live service focused approach to their games, despite Hogwarts Legacy literally being the best selling game of last year so along with the summer update we're also going to talk about the sequel as it seems like plans might have changed a bit at warner brothers we have a lot to talk about today so check the video chapters for easy viewing also guys i'm giving away a ps5 at 160,000 subscribers if you want to enter the details are in the pinned comment best of luck and let's get started so for those of you that are not aware developers avalanche software started teasing new content being added to hogwarts legacy following very loud requests for a paid expansion hogwarts legacy sold tens of millions of copies and has a massive following so naturally really news of a potential expansion kind of spread around the internet like wildfire and it's gotten to the point where avalanche software can no longer ignore it but luckily they announced a summer update that new content would be added to the game and then earlier this month the community manager made some posts on twitter to kind of set expectations and what we should all expect going into the summer to which they said hi everyone we are thrilled that you are all excited for the free update to hogwarts legacy this summer we love seeing all of the guesses and hopes for what could be a part of this update and while we're not ready to talk about it yet i do want to set expectations for what we are working on our original wording of additional updates and features for the game was very intentional this update was a small way of us showing appreciation to our players for the amazing reception to the game to which that wording of quote unquote small was also intentionally put but we'll talk about that in a sec while it's nice to have some clarity on what we should be expecting for hogwarts legacy going into 2024 i think i speak for everyone when i say that this update seems almost deliberately worded to make sure that people's expectations weren't very high for this update the summer update is not going to be a paid expansion it's a free update Update. so it's as simple as that now despite there being a ton of story possibilities and gameplay improvements that could be added with a paid dlc it doesn't seem like avalanche has any plans to release a paid dlc at least not at this moment but also we have to be realistic about this if a dlc isn't in the works right now it never will be because at this point avalanche has started work on the next game in the series and they probably want to save all of their new ideas for that while also getting as much of the team focused on it as possible which simply couldn't happen if there was a team working on dlc for hogwarts like Legacy one it's for all of those reasons that i firmly believe that if we don't get a paid dlc announcement this summer after the summer update releases it's just not going to happen at all and now that hogwarts legacy's community manager is telling us to manage our expectations for future updates it's really starting to look like our hopes of a paid expansion are officially just pure copium now as for what the summer update will include i'm just expecting it to be a smaller update with the addition of possibly some new spells maybe a handful of map locations a possible side quest as it relates to fantastic beasts but we should not expect anything massive or mind-blowing maybe they'll put something in to kind of tease us for the future game which honestly i would love that that would be plenty enough to hold me over until the next game like just give us a breadcrumb or like an easter egg that we can speculate on for the future of the series honestly with the word quote-unquote small being used it kind of has me thinking that the community really shouldn't be looking forward to this update whatsoever my guess is they're going to do some further optimization maybe some quality of life updates and then possibly just a photo mode and that's about it if we get something like a new game plus that would be mind-blowing and i would love that now another piece of hogwarts legacy news that came out earlier this month that had the entire community kind of losing their mind about the future of hogwarts legacy well apparently wb is looking to focus less on single player content going forward and more on live service type games which makes absolutely no sense to me like you have suicide squad killed the justice league and it was a huge financial disappointment and then you have gotham knights which i personally enjoyed the story but it, the gameplay just wasn't good enough both of which were intended to be long-term games that got tons of free updates and kept the player grinding xp both games of course massively underperformed while other warner brothers games like hogwarts legacy absolutely dominated so this left a lot of people kind of naturally confused as to why warner brothers is deciding to focus more on the strategy that has kind of failed them consistently over the one that's repeatable and works well but i think there's a pretty reasonable explanation at least if you look at this from the perspective of the warner brothers executives so kind of from the top down video games are a variable investment because it's almost impossible to determine just how profitable a video game is going to be prior to launch video games are getting more expensive despite games like helldivers and power world completely dominating sales charts but as you all know just because you put a lot of money into something doesn't mean you're going to make it back i'll just go ahead and say a high five to skull and bones some games are extremely expensive to develop like a gta game and they sell really well but because of the massive budget they don't usually make profit obviously excluding games from rockstar games and call of duty hogwarts legacy sold over 24 million copies but once 
somebody buys a copy of that game the transaction is over however other games like suicide squad and gotham knights in theory could have made money infinitely they could have literally just printed money because after the player buys a copy for 70 dollars and they keep playing it and putting money into the microtransactions and possible expansion packs it effectively turns into a money printer if you're looking at the gaming industry from the top down you probably notice that single player games don't make nearly as much money over a long period of time like live service games do making live service games are usually the safer investment since they also generally don't take as much time to develop they can essentially get the game in a playable state release it completely unfinished and broken and just develop the game over time rather than having it done in a complete experience the first time games as a service are also held to a lower graphical standard and thus have lower budgets warner brothers knows that a game like hogwarts legacy are an exception to the rule and even though that game was very expensive and very profitable it shouldn't be the company's standard expectation for new releases because they would effectively go broke and with warner brothers currently in a bit of a financial pickle due to the laundry list of expensive failures over the last few years i can absolutely understand why wb executives are ignoring the potential for runaway single player success stories like hogwarts legacy and are instead playing it safe with cheaper projects with a more predictable profit margin now how is this going to affect the legacy of hogwarts legacy 2 well there's a few ways but overall i just don't think it's going to affect it that much hogwarts legacy 1 was a runaway success and it's been reported that a sequel has already been greenlit and even though warner brothers is looking to operate a bit more cheaply and less dependent on making good single player games they also know that not making a sequel to the best-selling game of 2023 would really be a bad decision because the install base is already massive so i wouldn't worry too much about the recent reports of warner brothers strategies scare you into thinking that we're not going to get hogwarts legacy 2 because i do believe we will warner brothers may be desperate for profits but they even know how much money hogwarts legacy 2 will make regardless of its budget and they're not going to skip out on that one way to look at things is that warner brothers isn't going to walk away from single player games entirely they're just going to fund them less frequently than they're currently doing which is already not much by AAA game publisher standards there will still likely be about five or so live service games for every single player release by warner brothers now some of the live service games will be like your gotham knights or your suicide squad kill the justice league and have a story but they're also going to have other multiplayer components and live service stuff so don't think they're going to turn their back on offline single player games forever just don't expect them to come out as often as they might have been which again was already not much their next major single player release will likely be hogwarts legacy 2 in terms of their big AAA games and i'm really hoping they're considering some kind of return to form for batman arkham or shadow of mordor because those would do amazing for mending the relationship between wb and those who have been supporting all of their games this also seemingly heightens the possibility that a hogwarts legacy 2 is going to have some kind of live service aspect to it which i think could go one of two ways it could possibly be something perfectly innocent like cosmetic items that rotate every once in a while but don't actually impact the gameplay and are just a way for you to further customize your character or perhaps there will be additional emotes that again are completely optional but just give you a little bit more things if you want them i think what would be really cool is if there was a better wand builder in the game that allowed you to fully customize it have different skins and stuff like that that'd be pretty cool if hogwarts legacy 2 ends up having some kind of multiplayer component i think an in-game item shop is all but guaranteed and i imagine that there will be a bit of a split between the players who don't mind something like that and those who still think that it crosses the line entirely i'm really hoping that wb shows some kind of restraint and doesn't feel the need to put microtransactions or anything like that or like a battle pass into the next hogwarts legacy game but ultimately there's been much worse things that have happened many times in the gaming industry especially with wb themselves they're kind of going into it with suicide squad kill the justice league that was kind of a major flop like wb is no stranger to putting live service elements in single player games shadow of mordor was a fantastic single player game but the sequel shadow of war had paid time savers in a way to just whip out your wallet and overcome a lot of the game's challenge granted it wasn't impossible or overly grindy to play the game without using micros but the fact that they were there in the first place was a problem that many gamers had putting microtransactions in a single player game is never going to be a popular choice with gamers but wb is very openly looking to maximize profits and since this is something that they've done in the past don't be surprised if it shows up in the future there is a perfectly valid chance that hogwarts legacy 2 has some kind of paid time saver system so brace yourself even though i think that a lot of the team at avalanche would die on the hill to prevent that from happening but again anything could happen in my opinion wb just needs to be hands off and let avalanche software cook but what do you guys think about hogwarts legacy 2 do you think wb is going to try to incorporate live service elements and maximize profits or do you think avalanche software will be able to keep things strictly single player like the original and if wb is going to focus more on live service games what kind of game would you like to see a battle royale maybe a moba a harry potter wizarding world mmo i'm leaning more towards an mmo but i'm curious to hear what your thoughts are hit the 
the like button if you've enjoyed my coverage of hogwarts legacy over the years like the video subscribe with your notifications turned on don't forget to enter the ps5 giveaway those details are in the pinned comment and until next time this has been wes and i'll talk to you guys in the next video